Winona Ryder. Winona, that, that film was based uh, in the modern day, or was it based in the 50s and 60s? Uh, the early 60s, 1962. Yeah. I just wondered, do you think young girls are, are that innocent as that character was these days? Do you think they go through that anymore, that kind of pain? Uh, well, I certainly did. Um, I think, to me, I never really considered it a, a period piece. It was just kind of a timeless story of, of teen angst, you know? I mean, I certainly went through all that stuff. Yeah. Yes, because uh, Charlotte is the character. She, she's very inconsistent, isn't she? Yeah, that's what fascinated me about her was that, you know, one minute she wanted to be a nun and the next minute she wanted to have sex with somebody and the next minute it was something else. She was, and she felt bad about that, but she didn't, you know, that's what happens with teenagers is they feel guilty for having completely normal feelings. So, you know. And for not living up to what their parents think they should be and exactly. all the rest of it. Did you ever want to be a nun? No. <laughs> no. No. Me neither. <laughs> so, who are, where does Mermaids come into it? It's a charming movie. Well, why is it called Mermaids? I have no idea. Yeah. I, um, <clears throat> it sounds very symbolic, so I'm sure it means something, but I, I guess it's over my head. Yeah. But I mean, your, the little girl in that, your sister, your younger sister, it would be anything to do with the fact that she, she wants to be an Olympic swimmer, so she always wears a swimming cap. Wherever she goes, she wears a swimming cap. Right, right. Yeah. She's a she's a character, isn't she? Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Did you like working on that? I mean, never appear with children. You're no longer a child. I mean, they tend to steal the scenes a bit, don't they, little kids? Well, she didn't. She was like a real professional. It was her first movie, but she really handled it just like a, an adult would. She was she was very very wise. It was a little bit scary how how smart she was. Yeah. What about Cher? Oh, she was really amazing. She was really great and fun and and helpful. Did she give you any advice on life? And well, sure. I mean, I, when I was making the movie, I guess I was 17 and I was going through a lot of my introduction to like my first bad press and my, you know, first weird stuff with the tabloids. And she, of course, had been through that her whole life. So she, she really helped me through some weird stuff that goes along with show she's business. been through some weird stuff herself, oh, hasn't she? she certainly has, yeah. And what about that weird stuff? That was over Godfather 3 or something. Yeah. Tell us about that. What happened? Well, it, what actually happened was really simple. You know, I, I got sick and I couldn't do the movie, which was, you know, devastating and terrible. And I felt really bad about it. But of course, the, they didn't want to, they tried to make it really complicated, the press. They tried to make it sound like, you know, I don't know, there was millions of rumors flying around, but they just couldn't deal with that. It was a very simple reason. They just really... No, of course, the, yeah. it's a better story. Yes, exactly. If you were, if you were a teenager, fame has gone to your head, and you walked out mm -hmm. on Francis Ford Coppola. Right, which wasn't, wasn't the case at all. Not at all. Yeah. They, of course, you're in Johnny Depp. Mm -hmm. with, with whom uh, you've made Scissorhands, which we haven't seen here. And he's your fiancé. Yeah. I mean, do you get a lot of that with the big romance? Or is the romance on and off? And can you be seen with other boys and all this yeah, kind of Yeah, well, I, I mean, that stuff, you know, if, if, if you have a stable relationship, then it's not going to bother you. If you don't, then it probably will. And, and I feel pretty stable and secure. Do you think it's so. important to have a stable relationship when you're 19? Well, it's, it's certainly <laughs> helpful in this business, I mean, to have some stability, because this business, you just tend to be kind of, everything's up in the air all the time, so to have, like, a good family life and a good, a good relationship with someone is pretty important to me. Well, that, I often say that if I hear the phrase, rites of passage movies again, I go mad, because <laughs> I'm never very sure what it means. You've got a coming-of-age coming movie. You've made a few of these. Mm -hmm. Do you think that... that directors know much about, or writers, grown-up writers, know much about teenagers and how they actually do come of age? No, I, I think that most of the movies I see about teenagers are, are really pretty wrong, and, and I don't see, I, I think that it's just a, an adult's idea of what they want their teenagers to be like, or what, and it, I don't get it. It's, it, it kind of bothers me, but I try, I've always tried to avoid those, and, and stuck to what I believe to be pretty real. What do you think they get wrong about, about teenagers? Well, you know, they, they just tend to really stereotype them, you know. They, they like to put labels on teenagers, like this one's a, you know, takes drugs and is a stoner or whatever they call them that week, and then the other one's a jock, and they just love to label kids when they don't, they don't, they don't treat them with enough respect. 
You, you know? think it's be, you're either a good teenager or a bad teenager. Exactly, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, but, and you said it much better than I did. <laughs> but you were born, you called Winona because you were born in a silly sounding town in Minnesota. Yes, yeah. yes. Minnesota is the back of beyond, isn't it, really? Oh, I, it's one of my, I love it there. <laughs> yeah. It's a long way from everywhere. Though. Yeah, it's like kind of, it's real out in the middle of the country. How did you get from Winona, Win Minnesota, to Los Angeles, California? Well, I, I never grew up in, in Minnesota. I, I was born there because my, my mom is from there and she was visiting and I just kind of came out. And <laughs> um, I, I, we moved to San Francisco and that's where I grew up. So I grew up in California. Were your mother and father unconventional parents, do you think? Well, not really. I mean, they've been called unconventional. It, it depends on what you mean by unconventional. They, you know, of course, they were active in the 60s, so they got you know, labeled as hippies when really they they weren't hippies. They were just kind of more on the intellectual side of the 60s than the other side. They weren't flower children. No, no, they weren't. They were, um, but of course people like to make it sound like they were. And I, I mean, I grew up in a household where we had, you know, rules like everybody else and, and you know, it was pretty conventional, I would think, you know. Yeah. Were they we just strict? had a little more, they, w they were strict, but they were also, they encouraged us to come to them with any sort of uh, problem that we might have that most kids aren't able to go to their parents with. Like if we had a question about, you know, drugs or anything like that, we could go to them and they would talk to us about them and take the mystery away so we wouldn't go out and get it on the street. So they really encouraged a lot of like, there was a lot of communication in our family, you know, which was really, really nice because we, we weren't repressed, you know, we didn't have to go find out for ourselves what what it was all about. Is it tough for somebody like you working in the film business, a young, a young lady like you, to avoid drugs, to avoid drink? Not, I'm just not interested in it. I mean, I, I can see how some people might turn to it, but it just doesn't, I, I'm, I'm too little. It affects me too much. I, I'm too, I get too hung over if I do anything. So um, I, I just, it's not my thing. It's not my cup of tea. Do you think it's possible to preserve that kind of innocence? working in the movie business? Is it not a very hard and it, ruthless business? Well, it is, but if you have it, it all, I think it really all depends on how you were raised. And, and you know, I was raised, I, you know, I was really close to my parents and they really, you know, I, I had a stable upbringing and that's why I feel like I, I'm pretty stable now. And I, I don't know, I can only really speak for myself. Now, you've got a stable relationship, you say, which I, right? does this mean that you're going to get married, sir? Um, when we have time, we will, but we would want to do it at a time when we don't have to go to work right away, you know, we would want to be able to take like a nice long honeymoon and all that, so we're just waiting for the right time. Honeymoon in Minnesota, though. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. We're honored, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.